Hello YouTube, it's uh, Paul again. Pull it apart, Paul. Okay, what do we have here? I'm just going to pause for a second for you to absorb. Some of you may remember this one. I'll just turn the light on. Okay, what do we have here? All right, we have a collection of Super Panther, a Tardy Pierce Simpson, 27 meg, 40 channel radios. The only different one here is this one. Just to have a look at the controls, the mic, and the buttons. Then we have a recent acquisition today of this radio from a Moorabbin Hamfest with the genuine Pierce Simpson microphone. Have a look at the condition. I think this one is the number one in the system between this one which has all the backlit controls and green LEDs which if you can remember is the green goblin and we have a few others here which are not lit I've just run out of power cables that's in power cables that's the only reason all right so Nearly all of these have been restored. They're in the collection. My favourites are, if you haven't guessed, are this one here. This one here. The Stalker. The new acquisition, this one, as it's totally stock standard. But look at the chrome. And then you have the first one that I did, which was the Pierce Simpson Super Chiva in the green. A lot of work went into that one. All the buttons are backlit. Okay, so what's the purpose of this video? Well, so many of you have been asking, how do I clean these radios to get looking like uh, the ones you have? It's not an easy answer. What I might do is go through what defects or what challenges do we have first. And if we have a look at the Green Goblin, we can have a look at, this will start to show you. The electroplating process on these Hattati Pierce Simpsons and stalkers were very very cheap so they never prepared the base plastics very well they did use a copper based process so it was a true tr true electroplating process but it was cheap so I all right so how do we detail these radios how do we get them as nice as this with and what choice of products do, do I choose? It's not what everybody chooses. All right, so first of all, you've seen me with my solutions. Um, what do I put in that? Well, one of them is this. Now, it's just not any product. It is actually the old version, which is the alkaline product. I do not recommend the new product because it is not strong. What else do I use? I use um, fabric cleaner and it's in the liquid form and why the reason why is because it has strong degrees built in now I could go and I still do I have five liter containers of automotive degreases but I choose this for one reason is that it has um, many different products in it so it has cleaners degreases it has um, uh, um, many different um, options 
And the outcome, to give you an example, this product here that I picked up from the recent ham fest at Moorabbin, I soaked in this formula for two day, for a day and a half, pulled out, cleaned it with the um, toothbrush, and look at the result. No other, nothing else has been done. And this is, you know, it was a relatively clean radio, but what was nowhere near what it is now. All right, so, and then on the top, I've polished the top covers with what I'm about to show you. All right, so once you've cleaned, what do you do? All right, so I have two products, Auto Soul Metal Polish and Auto Soul in Aluminium product. Now the aluminium product, uh, you need to be very mindful that uh, you have to start with clean rags. Um, the rags that I use by choice are microfibers, which I purchase in lots of, or in packets from various different sources. Um, but I do start with this one. It is quite an abrasive. It's quite, you've got to be very careful. Um, when you see a color change in the chrome, you've got to stop using that because what it will do is take the electroplating or the chrome surface off right down to the copper, the copper product. All right, so once we've got that, I polish with this, and then we end up with a surface like this. Now this is a real problem because this is the the um, issue with these model of radios. All of them suffer the same fate, and that is that the electroplating lifts. I do have a solution for this, but it is not a, a cheap option. The option is to remove the chrome, as I've shown you in other other videos, and and respray or repaint in a different colour. I've tried many different options. I'm still seeking a chrome process that looks like this factory. There is no substitute at this point. So I need to make a decision when I'm restoring a radio. Do I use what I've got and given and make it the best? Or do I restore to the point that I take these to an electroplater? At this point, I'm still seeking options. And those options are, I believe, that I will find an electroplating process that I will be able to provide solutions to you guys for your radios. So, how do I do it? Well, basically we use this, this product first, as I've mentioned, and we use strokes, the full length of the faceplate. Now I choose to put down a mask on the black or remove the faceplate totally. Now with these radios, it's a bit more difficult to remove the faceplate totally. So I mask the covers on the side, the back and the bottom, and I start polishing. Now I don't have a radio that has all of the green uh, pitting or the black pitting, but these radios, because of the thickness of the electroplating do suffer from a form of, um, oh gee, what do I call it? It's, it's like an acid eats into the surface and the surface becomes all speckled and green. So what you see is the copper coming through the electroplating because the top layer, the final layer is so thin that the copper breaks through with any uh, either salt exposure or high alkaline content where you are or acid and the acid may be from your fingers or the the human skin uh, hands do that and that's part of the reason so that if you have a look at a radio and the radio is relatively good like this one or this one or to a lesser degree this one it's been because it's sat on the it's sat on a bench, and it's had not much uh, contact with human skin. So we can see some of these radios. 
I'll pick one. Where can I pick one? Oh, gee. One of the, oh, okay, this one here. You can see here the knob is is bronze. That's actually the copper base layer coming through. And we can see it's quite dull. Now, this has been cleaned and detailed. Um, versus this one above it, it's looking very sparkling. Uh, okay, and we can just see on the end there that there's a bit of copper coming through. But when we look at this one, and this one, which is the, the new one just purchased, it looks like it's uh, brand new. And that's because it's had very little use. So when you see um, the brown coming through on the controls, it's because it's had quite a bit of use. Or a lot of, a lot of touching by the human skin. Now this can be... Um, this, this concept can be transferred to all radios. So if you have a radio that is not in good condition, you can, you can make it a survivor. And it comes down to look, putting the right polish on it, finishing the surface, using the right cleaning products, and understand what you're putting on or what you're soaking the products in. Now... I can leave a product in there, you know, like the volume, all of the controls, the the um, channel selector for up to four days. Um, the example being is that this this microphone here was awful. I left it in there for three days, scrubbed it, brought it out, and we're in a pretty good a pretty good situation. All right. Now, most of the microphones I come across, that's what happens to them. They get, they sit in this condition, sit in this formula for several days and then get scrubbed and reassembled. All right, so I hope that was of some benefit to you. This gives you an idea of the collection at the moment and the process that I go through in order to get a radio prepared for display. If it's, if it's not in the display cabinet, it means that it hasn't completed its process. All right, there you go. Hope you enjoyed this. Uh, this is um, Paul. Uh, hope that um, you got something out of it. And remember, if it's, if it's an old radio and it works, and it gives you enjoyment, put in the time, and I'll guarantee you, you will have um, fun. Uh, it will spark um, an interest in our hobby, and you'll be able to share that to other people. All right, please comment, like, and subscribe.